From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Dave DeForest reporting U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry wraps up a visit to Geneva. Kerry said the United States and its partners are discussing several proposals to stop the violence in Syria. After discussions with other leaders, Kerry spoke to reporters criticizing recent attacks on health care facilities by Syrian government forces. The regime has clearly indicated a willingness over a period of time now to attack uh, first responders, to attack health care workers and rescuers. And the attack on this hospital is unconscionable uh, under any standard, anywhere. News agencies quoted U.S. officials who requested anonymity as saying the United States is considering mapping out safe zones that would provide refuge for civilians and members of the moderate opposition. There was a tense call Monday in Baghdad. Protesters who stormed into the international zone on Saturday largely toned down their demonstrations and drifted out to celebrate a Shiite religious festival. Protest leader Muqtada al-Sadr vowed he would return Friday to call for either a change in government or new elections. The activist group Greenpeace has leaked classified documents about the trade agreement that is being negotiated by the United States with the European Union. Greenpeace says the documents show corporate interests are being served over uh, given preference, rather, over environmental and consumer safety concerns. The United States did not immediately react, but EU Trade Commissioner Cecilia Malmström said, quoting, many of today's alarmist headlines are a storm in a teacup. She said the details in the leaked documents reflect each side's negotiating position and nothing else. This is VOA News. Venezuela's opposition says it has delivered a petition to election authorities calling for a nationwide referendum to remove President Nicolas Maduro from office. The opposition Democratic Unity Roundtable said Monday it has collected 1.85 million signatures, more than nine times the number needed to launch the referendum process. On the U.S. campaign trail... U.S. Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump says the United States cannot, quoting now, continue to allow China to rape our country. Trump has repeatedly framed the trade deficit between the two countries as China taking advantage of the U.S., saying his skills as a dealmaker will erase the imbalance. But when the Chinese come in and they want to make great trade deals and they make the best trade deals and not anymore, when I'm there, we turn it around, folks. We turn it around. Pakistan, meanwhile, is reacting angrily to Trump's claim that if elected, he would win freedom in two minutes for the jailed Pakistani doctor who helped the CIA track down Osama bin Laden. Tuesday's primary election in Indiana is seen as a key contest in the race to become the Republican nominee for the November election. Multiple polls are showing Trump leading his nearest competitor, Texas Senator Ted Cruz. And on the Democratic side, the latest polls give former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton a small lead in Indiana over Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Nearly every public school in Detroit, Michigan, was closed Monday after more than 1,500 teachers called in sick. Teachers are unhappy about plans that could mean they will not get paid over the summer. Like the city itself, Detroit schools are struggling financially, and the Michigan State Legislature is debating a plan that will let the Detroit school system restructure and pay off its huge debt. The U.S. Supreme Court Monday refused to hear a challenge to Seattle, Washington's minimum wage law brought by the city's franchise business owners. The business owners argue the law requiring employers to pay workers $15 an hour is discriminatory because it gives them the same deadline to phase in the higher wages as that of large companies. 
The U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom says religious liberty across the globe has sharply declined over the last year. The commission said that authoritarian governments throughout the world are jailing prisoners of conscience, most often Christians and Muslims, for practicing their religious beliefs. It said there is an increase in prejudice against Jews and Muslims in Europe. The commission report singled out 13 countries. It cited China, where Christians have been imprisoned for refusing to remove crosses atop churches, Iran, where religious minorities have been sentenced to death, and North Korea, where thousands of believers have been imprisoned in labor camps. In Washington, I'm Dave DeForest. That's the latest world news from BOA.